Hey guys, Sprouty here. Welcome back to the channel. Before we get into this video, guys, do us a massive favor. Hit that like button and subscribe. As today, I'm going to give you a guide to take you from a beginner to a pro at Lost Light. Now, I'm not saying by the end of this video, you're going to walk into the game and be instantly better. However, all these tips will give you sort of that knowledge to help you gradually improve over time now i did plan to remake my ultimate newbie guide however i looked through it and i was thinking there's actually very valid points in that video so if you haven't already watched that one i recommend you do either after or before you watch this one put the two together and you should come out a lot better now this video will obviously give you tips to make you better at the game get the most out of your time while playing it but if you do have any more questions anything not mentioned in these videos and stuff my discord is open and linked in the description below if you do want to jump on there and people can help you i can help you etc also the official lost light discord does exist you can join that one but if you want a bit more um quiet when you're asking questions and stuff mine's a bit more chilled than that one is so without further ado, guys, let's get straight into this video. So then, guys, let's assume you've just installed the game and you're just heading into your first game. The first thing you obviously want to do is set your sensitivities in your first match. Now, you would think with most games that have got a training range, they would give you it from the start. For some reason, that doesn't apply on Lost Light, and you have to gradually unlock the shooting range. And it's just, it takes a while to actually get there. You're going to be hitting like level 15 or more before you actually unlock the training range. So the first game you get into, it'll be on BAF Factory. Set your sensitivity, trust us, it'll help down the line. Find a, a, a wall to shoot at or something. It gives you free ammo, free gun. Not a very accurate gun, but still a good time to do all that sort of thing. And it'll help. Obviously set your layout as well if you're not on PC. If you're on mobile, set your layout time you're doing that as well. Now, you'll start with a basic gun. I think it's an AKS-74UN that you start with. It's one of my favourite guns. I'm going to suggest you find a gun that you really like and stick with just that gun for the majority of your game. Now... A lot of people will just hoard guns. Any gun they find, they'll put it in their storage. They'll be like, I'll, I'll keep it for a rainy day and stuff. Pointless. Absolutely pointless. There is obviously guns that are better than other guns. Damage-wise, you know, attachment-wise and stuff. But when you're starting out, you can't really customise much unless you just pick up every single attachment you see, which I also would not recommend because you'll just run out of storage like that. So... Pick one of these starter guns you like, or pick one up off a Marauder or another player if you manage to kill another player eventually, and just learn to control this gun. Make it your main weapon. Doesn't matter if people on the Discord say it's crap or the, such and such is better. Until you're like level 20 plus, I would just try and stick to the basic guns, get good with them, and you'll not have to worry about attachments, etc. All of that crap. Right, so this next bit, guys, goes for when you're in a raid. So you're in factory, you're in Mount Ankiyama, or you're in Windswept Harbour when you eventually unlock it. I think it's level 12. Now, <clears throat> a lot of people will pick up everything. I don't see the point in picking everything up because eventually you're going to run into something that's more expensive than what you've got and you have to drop things and leave yourself open to being shot in the head by a sniper rifle or whatever. Just pick up small, expensive items. Now, by expensive, I mean anything north of 10,000 in value. So there's metal scissors, there's sapphire rings, CPUs, stuff like that, that are really expensive to just outright sell. It'll obviously tell you the price on the item when you come to pick it up. Just fill your bags constantly with the smallest, most expensive items every single time you go into a game. Now, I'll get into all our items later in the video, but what you want to do is you want to just stack these and sell them, right? I'll tell you, here and now, in this video, the most overpowered thing you can get in the game is Luna. Now, Luna is the cash, if you're not familiar with that, like your cash at the top right of the screen in your shelter. You want Luna more than you want items. Now, when you go into a raid, you'll 
pick up loads of things. Just get the, like I say, get the expensive ones and sell them. When you're low level, you need more money because if you die, you lose all your armor, you lose your gun and stuff. You want to be able to just buy another one without worrying, oh, I'm running out of money or I haven't got enough space for anything. You know, it's going to help in the long run. Just sell absolutely everything. Even pick up large things like batteries or power, small power stations, whatever they're called, just to fill your bag up and sell it at the end of the run. All right, guys, on the subject of looting, we'll get the trade goods now. So that's your iron, your wire, your fuel, and stuff like that, right? Now, when you're extremely low level, you know, you're level one to five, pick them up by all means. You need them for the tasks. You get high, high demissions, pick up so much iron from factory and stuff. Fair enough. But when you get into later raids, so you're getting, you're pushing past level eight and stuff, you don't necessarily need to pick it up. And there's a good reason why. Now, in an average factory run, average Mount Akiyama run, you're going to get between 10 and 20 trade goods if you cleared the entire place, right? So you looked in every square inch, there wasn't any other players looting, you would find between 10 and 20 iron, 10, 20 wire, fuel, plastic, etc. Electrical, pardon me, components. They're the five main ones. Now, what you can do is, and I'm going to use an example here, is... When you unlock the dismantling, which is on the crafting bench, it's easier to pick up something that you know is going to give you a lot of trade goods than it is to pick up the trade goods. Now, for example, like I've said, you could do a full match and get 10 to 20 iron, and you would have to go around the whole place looking for all this iron and potentially get killed or get your armor knackered and cost you loads of money, cost you loads of bullets and stuff. But if you found an extinguisher... Now, you'll find these a lot in Factory, a lot in Mount Akiyama and stuff. Extinguisher on the dismantling button gives you instantly 60 iron. So, let's just, for instance, say you wanted to pick up loads of iron on a row and loads of little items and stuff. An extinguisher only takes up three slots. Pick up an extinguisher, and then you don't need to pick up any iron for the rest of the match. That leaves the slot open for something else, which is more expensive, like a CPU or a ring or something like that. So... Once you get a bit higher level, you don't need to pick these things up, and you can now, like, sort of pick other things up instead. You'll learn as you go which items dismantle into more things what, when you actually get the items to dismantle. I couldn't give you, like, a full summary right now. That would take us far too long to work out and try the error and stuff like that. Drones, for instance, they are dismantling into quite a lot. So I wouldn't worry so much about picking these things up unless your mission actually specifically says it now another thing about looting as well this is besides the fact that i said pick up loads of little things go into your shelter look at your crafting bench look at your market look at your your storage and stuff and look what items you need to upgrade and just get a little a notepad next to you or write down on your on your pc notepad or something like that and just jot down exactly what you need so you know when you're in a raid what to look out for what to pick up and what to keep hold of and that'll set yourself better for the future playing, not wondering, like, what do I need? Or I needed this. I saw one of them. I didn't pick it up. Just make a little, either a mental note or a physical note of what you need to pick up to do your upgrading. And another thing that I do on this subject as well is once you unlock the black market, obviously the expense of things, you'll get to figure this out once you start trying to buy things. I only buy things for upgrades that are really cheap, cheap, and I mean cheap as in less than 50,000. Because if you think about where you're going to buy six items at 100,000 each, that's that's nearly half a million gone. Especially early in the game where you need the Luna for other things. Only buy the cheap things, the more expensive things, make a note for and find them in raids. Obviously find the cheap stuff as well if you thought it'd be asked to buy it outright. But it'll set yourself better because you need... 5.5 million for a new secure box, you need 6 million for the arsenal, you need stuff like that, you need a lot of Luna for, so it's better off find them in raids than in buying the cheap ones than, you know, panicking all the time. Right guys, this next one relates to combat. Now, I can't give you an expert how to kill absolutely everybody, guy, that's down to you to improve your own skill, use guns you like, Etc. Improve your own aim 
it all depends on how you yourself play it compared to the person you're against. I can't give you a definitive guide to PvP. However, I will show you uh, my little tip is that cheap ammo is actually better than expensive ammo when you're not in ranked mode. Now, ranked mode is a completely different scenario. Everybody's trying to kill you. You want the high tier ammo. Even if you survive ranked, you know, if someone doesn't kill you or you don't manage to escape, you still lose everything you've got. So I would go all in on ranked. However, when you're out of ranked, you get a lot of campers, you get extract campers, stuff, throwing grenades at you and stuff. You don't want to be spending several hundred thousand Luna on ammo every match. Now, this match in the background of the video so far, I've been using VMAX, which is like 36,000 to get 500 bullets. It's the cheapest upon cheapest assault rifle ammo you can get in the game. Pardon me. And if you're accurate, as you've seen in the video with that player that pushed us inside a hospital, he was using better ammo than me and I still managed to kill him. It's all about your positioning and your, your general accuracy outplaying the other player. So, like I say, you'll save a lot more money if you just buy the cheap stuff rather than the more expensive stuff. It works out eventually because you spend more money buying ammo to kill bots rather than players because you'll only see like one or two players at first until you get higher level um but right now you don't really need it and armor wise guys get the most you can from your tier three to five armor repair it when it needs repair and don't think all oh, right it's, it needs repair i'll sell it and buy a new one you're gonna waste your money you don't need a great amount of like high tier armor until you hit ranked this is obviously outside of ranked I can't give you a ranked guy at the moment because for some reason when I go and ranked I can't see any buildings and the floor disappears and I just die. I need to fix that bug. I don't know really what to do in that aspect. However, like I say, cheap as possible. You're going into the raids to loot. If you're going into PvP, go nuts. That's entirely up to you. But at lower level, you want to be looting. You want to be progressing yourself as much as possible. So you want to keep hold of your cash if you possibly can. Right guys, last but not least, and probably the most important, is not don't rush the game, right? I see a lot of people on the Discord and stuff. I've maxed everything. It's been a couple of weeks since the wipe and stuff. I, if you play all day long, fair enough. There is other games in the world. You know you can't play other games from time to time. You don't need to rush it. You're going to get to a point where you're above everybody else and there's nothing to do and you're bored and you're too overly rich just enjoy the game take your time gathering and looting and stuff we'll get wipes on this game right similar to escape from tarkov at the end of the season everything wipes and you lose absolutely all your progress all your items don't let it discourage you because we get new content every time it wipes stuff like that obviously these trade goods and stuff on this wipe weren't here last wipe that was a new addition the the quests changed a couple of the attachments chains, etc. So just enjoy the game. There's no rush. You'll notice when you see me live that I, I'm still like below level 20 and stuff because I've got no need to rush the game to get better than everybody else straight away. You know what I mean? I'm enjoying looting. I'm enjoying the PvP, etc. Just enjoy the game. But anyway, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you've hit that like. Make sure you've subscribed. Make sure you've jumped on my Discord. Hopefully, I'll see you when I'm next live on the game or in my next video. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.